us and this day. The Bible says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through sounds, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Let's open our mouths and reverend the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Let's reverend the Holy One, the Holy God that is is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Let's thank this God has kept us from the beginning of this month even up to, up to now. Let's just worship Him for His by His grace that we are gathered here this morning. Let's just thank the Holy Audience of One, the ever faithful One, the only eternal One. Let's bless Him for another privilege to be in His presence. Oh Father, we bless Your name this morning. We give You all the glory. We give You all the honor. We give You all adoration. We exalt you, Father Lord, we bless your name. Oh Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your name. We reverend and honor you this morning, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let's ask that the Holy Spirit reveal himself mighty amongst us this morning. Let's ask that the Holy Spirit reveal himself mighty amongst us this morning. It will not just be a regular service. His presence will be felt mightily and heavily amongst us this morning. His presence will be felt heavily in this room. Let's ask that His presence be evident this morning. In the name of Jesus. Ragamba Koshele Venia Soli Velo. Ragamba Lava Shandelia Vrado Shatena. In the name of Jesus. Let's ask for the evening of the Holy Spirit. Let's ask for the evening of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit ministers to our hearts. That He steals our hearts and calms our minds this morning. And the Holy Spirit steals our hearts and calms our minds this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. That our gaze and focus will be on holy Him. In the name of Jesus. Oh, 
come as a wind. And of your mighty rushing wind with Pentecostal grace, please leave it projected for me. Holy Spirit, we ask this morning that you will come as the wind. We ask that you will come with a rushing sound. We ask that you come with Pentecostal grace that all of women born may see the glory of thy face. If you want to see the glory of his face this morning, why not lift up your voice in the worship of the King of Kings, the ancient of days, and the one that rules in the affairs of men, the one that rules in the affairs of this great nation, Nigeria, the one that rules over the affairs of your home, the one that rules over the economy of Nigeria, the one that rules over the economy of our home, of our various homes, the one that rules over our finances, the one who rules over our feeding, the one that opens his hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. We worship you, our God. We exalt, we magnify you. I cannot hear the sound of grateful heart this morning. I cannot hear the sound of grateful heart this morning. I cannot hear the sound of grateful heart this morning. Father, we need a grateful heart. We need
you will see what the Lord has done. Even for us as a nation, even for us as a people. At the beginning of this year, we never knew you know, what this year will, will, will speak. But for each and every moment, God has been faithful. She be there while we're going But we are going one love Instead, we do not want to eat. The Lord is the multiplying effect. Father, we say thank you, Lord, this morning. Set our thanks and worship. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Let's have the daily positive convention for today. All right. We're going to be reading the word of God. And I want us to read Psalm 33, verse 1, PT, translation together. Let's go. It's time to sing and shout for the Lord. Go ahead, all you redeemed ones. On doing, praise Him with all you have. For praise this love on the lips of God's devoted love. What are we saying to the ears of our fathers this morning? Let us declare that I will praise Him. For a fearfully and wonderfully made. God is special with you. If you are a special with you, why not, why not show, show him that you are a special with you this morning? With your voice of adoration. And you are because you are special. I am fearfully and wonderfully made by you. Thank you, ancient of this. Receive all the praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying.
for this faithfulness over my life. Um, I clocked a year older last week. Woo! Uh, yeah, but, uh, something plus <laughs> years of his faithfulness. God has been faithful. God has been good. He has been good to me. The Bible says that God is the good God. He's on the cross of his own, and I have, I have tasted, I've eaten, not just not tasted, but I've eaten, I've experienced of God's goodness, of his faithfulness. Last year I was not where I am today, and that is one year of extra year of God's faithfulness. I can see the strides in my life, I can see God's hand perpetually over my life. I want to thank God for that. I also want to thank God for my elder brother's um, introduction that happened this month. My brother has traveled home for it and you know, God took him there safely. He brought him back everything that he prepared at home that he wanted to do. God gave him a fair weather today. It was a good occasion. There was no accident. There was no evil. I just want to thank God. And lastly, I want to thank God because um, the Bible says that God will not do a thing without revealing it. I want to thank God because there are some things that God has started showing me about, you know, things to happen. And I am beginning to take note of them because they are now, you know, showing the next steps of my life, the next phase of my life, how things will turn out. And you know, it's been awesome because I know that God is intentional about me. I just want to thank God. Praise God. I just want to thank God in my life. On the 28th last month, I complete 27 years in marriage. This is so easy to God. God is keeping us with good help and no problem. I just want to thank God for the great and what I doing upon our lives. I learned nothing for that of my parents. When I did you all, I asked my parents. I never seen myself in a corner of a fight. Who is the My mother tell me, say, ah, now understanding. Yes, since that day, I take it as a prayer point. Say, God, let this grace that work my mother's marriage, let her work in my marriage. Don't be saying we know the problem, we know the fight. But our problem is only less, no last the next day. I said, that God that give us the glory, I say, make it go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Okay, um, I'm here to testify to the goodness of God in my life. And in terms of my family, I thank God for salvation of my family. And secondly, I want to give God a praise for how He has always uh, showed up for um, some financial issues. You know, sometimes some uh, views will pop up and we have to years before now when most of uh such views come so I I always have this PP uh, kind of how do I solve this? But I want to thank God that he has never failed me. That's when you call he has always been showing up, you know, in my life and that of um, my family. And secondly, I want to thank God for the life of my mom. Okay, um, over 10 years ago, my mom had uh, had these issues on her leg that she can't uh, walk upright. I, I you know at some point it was like uh, something that was hereditary from her own family. All her elder ones are not. When, when you get to that particular age, that issue comes. And my mom's own becomes so severe that she can't even stand up. She like that for years. And we've been trying to put the children, we've been trying to come with this sort of family So they uh, you know they took us to so many uh, people who are uh, consultants in that view. So the charges they've been calling, you know, has been so huge. To an extent that some people would even come and tell us, you don't have to leave your mom like that. Mm -hmm. and every other person that they've seen that have gone for that uh, knee, knee surgery, and they always die. Sincerely, I've seen like two, three, four people that I know 
So God did it so huge that when we never thought uh, God, you know, perform the miracle for number one, granted my mom visa to travel to London for the surgery. When they got there, we thought it was something minimal. But when the doctor brought the bill, it was over 15 million. I was like, hey, where do we get this? You know, um, myself and my siblings who, you know, create days to pray and fast and all. We're believing God that God will charge and do this thing. But at the end of the day, I want to give God thanks. That surgery came and it was super successful. I'm not understanding. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for my life, my children, my husband, and how God, God is good in my family. So, my second testimony is because my brother, my slow brother, my slow brother is somebody that has money before. Let that one have problems. Don't himself as we drink less. Yes, you will yes. drink, smoke. Mm. You tell him, as you say, if you stop drinking or smoke, you say you go die. I say, leave this thing so that God will help you. will pass by. He said, no. So that this drink will help her. It's okay. But thank God now that what God has done every day, we are praying, even the wife, sometimes you beat them, push them for house. I say, God, what is happening in this family? So, now, my brother bought my house. My husband said, yeah, let's go drink and buy some things. I used to pick more. I said, ah, this ain't going to take anything. Somebody that even if you see a little way in the past, you ask me, wait, 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 wait. But I'm going to say, no, Jesus. But now, if you cannot give my brother anything, then you say, ah, I'm not taking all those things. Thank you, Jesus.
for Jesus. Today, five weeks,
here to minister the song to you. We pray that it blesses you. God has been fighting our battles and has been sustaining us. We are here to give all the glory to you. We pray, we pray that it's some bless to your heart in Jesus' name.
that he said to just do the miracle. Oh. This God is awesome. This God is the example of our praise. distinction to the glory of God. Isn't this God faithful and isn't this God good? God, we have come this day to return the praise and the glory and the honor to you. Nobody will share of this glory, oh Lord. Nobody. You healed, you saved, you delivered, and you made whole of it. You do all things. 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 As a church, as a family, as individuals, we have come to say thank you for that which you have done in our lives, that which you are doing, and that which you continue to do. Father, Lord, accept our praise and our thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to always thank you. May never cease in our lives. Amen. Lord, we will always give you thanks. We will always give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just, I don't know, I just feel that we should thank God more. I'm struggling between my message and just thanking God because it's God, it is salvation. There's this doxology. I don't know how many of you know the doxology. Those of us who are who come from Orthodox background, you know it. Praise God from oh, oh blessings flow. Praise Him, oh creatures here below. Oh, oh, oh. 
active all our airway tongues, it will be enough here to thank you. And so we consciously, consciously this morning, we turn the praise and thanks given to you for all that you are doing. Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. I'll just touch on it. I won't be able to. But I just, it's just a particular aspect, really. And I trust God that God will expand it in our hearts. It's a desire, the desire I have, I said at the fresh partition, I mean, the, sorry, the prayer revolution, that after this series, the person of the Holy Spirit will be so real to you that you have a much deeper, much intense, much powerful relationship with Him. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. I will read the NLT. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So two Sundays ago, we looked at the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the grace of God, we bring salvation as appeared unto all men, Titus chapter 12, verse 11. And we saw, we established that God the Father is the owner of grace, but the dispenser of grace is God the Son. So if you want grace, you need to access grace through the Son. Or the Son is the custodian and dispenser of grace. Last Sunday we looked at the love of God. And for God so loved the world that he gave. Love always gives. Um, the love of God is shed upon our heart. And the love of God compels us. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is the love of God that restrains us and prevents us from running riot. Praise the Lord. Amen. And this morning, we just touch on the communion according to KJV and some other translations in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the koinonia of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead, which we know. First John 5 7, please let me project it. Also, get to the picture. But there are three that bear record in their own the Father, the world, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. The Father, the world, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, amplified. Translation, you have amplified? Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, amplified. Then God said, Let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make man in our image. Let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make man in our image. I go to our likeness and all of that. So we established from these two scriptures and many more that the Holy Spirit is the top person of the body. Now, the Holy Spirit is equal and is God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And whilst I was preparing this message, there was some some revelation that came and I'll share with you in the course of looking at these scriptures that we we tend to try and do a decision and draw a line and say this is the manifestation of God the Father, this manifestation of God the Son, this manifestation of God the Holy Spirit. But you know that that is that's a um, intermediate knowledge. That's having intermediate knowledge. But if you have advanced knowledge, you really cannot delineate between the operation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'll show you from scriptures. And the Holy Spirit began to show me because when I was when I was trying to get some of his attributes, he was going back to Christ. And then the Holy Spirit said to me that, do you actually think that the difference between God the Son and God the Holy Spirit or God the Father? There is no because there's just one God. Hello? There's just one God, right? So if there's one God, 
the manifestation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is interchanged, and you really cannot say, okay, you can't com compartmentalize. You cannot compartmentalize. If you try to help you play with that, you compartmentalize and say, this is, this is God the Father. This is where God the Father starts. This is where he ends. This is God the Son. This is where God the Son starts. This is where he ends. And this is God the Holy Spirit. This is where he starts. This is where he ends. You will blow your mind because you find, as you try to do that, in fact, let me go ahead of myself. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Jesus. <laughs> the Spirit of Christ. I'll show you. We'll get there. So, how then do you begin to compartmentalize? So, when the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of Jesus, that means that Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one and the same. So, what Jesus is doing is that God is not the Holy Spirit is God the Father is doing. In so many places, you know why Jesus got into trouble? Every time you say that, I am my Father, I will say, Ah, that's me. You can't understand that. Say that I am my father I want. What I see my father do, I do. So you can't, please, don't even try it. You'll blow your mind. Yes, sir. When Jesus was here on earth, he provided guidance, protection, direction, and companionship. We see that in John chapter 10. Uh, I'm going to be a bit fast because of time. In John chapter 10, you know, um, the good shepherd and all of that. Maybe let's just read on one or two of the verses. John chapter 10. Look at verse 11. John 10, 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So, what does the shepherd do? The shepherd tends, the shepherd guides, the shepherd guards, the shepherd protects, the shepherd leads, the shepherd leads to a green pasture. You know all the things that the shepherd does. That's what Jesus was doing for us right here on earth. Verse 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I know of mine. Verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Pastor Jesus, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man put them unto me. So that was that's Jesus, where he was, why was there physically on earth? But Jesus has then, you know, left here, left the earth physically, and before he left, he said something very profound in John chapter fourteen, verse sixteen. John fourteen, sixteen, and I will pray the Father. And shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. I will give you another comforter that there was a first comforter and that was him. So as I'm living here physically, as I'm taking to heaven, I don't want to leave you comfortless. I don't want to leave you desolate. I'm going to ask the Father to send another comforter who will do exactly that I've been doing. So all that I did in John chapter 10 that I'm a shepherd, you'll find that I will send another comforter to do that. Verse um, 16, right? Yeah, that's verse 16. Verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. See? Are you confused? He said that I'm going. I will send you another comforter. Then in the same breath, in verse 18, he says that I will not leave you. I will come to you. Who is coming to you? Jesus. But he said he sent another comforter. Who is that other comforter he sent him? Who is that other comforter? But he said, I'm coming to you. Who is coming to you? So, do you see that? Holy Spirit, do Jesus, so one and the same. <laughs> so, I'm saying another comforter in verse 16, referring to the Holy Spirit. In verse 16, it says, I will come to you. I will not leave you I will come to you. So, when you see the Holy Spirit, you see me. I manifest in the Holy Spirit. That's why I said that it's based knowledge to try and compartmentalize the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Don't try it. You won't understand it. That's why people get into argument with, you know, of the lab, whatever, say that. Uh, the law will be more. Uh, so, probably, I said, wait, what was your Don't even try it. Oh, because if you try to use your head to try to explain to them, you, you use yourself, you get confused. And so, just leave them alone. Whether they understand the concept of the Trinity or not, you don't owe anybody any explanation. So, when Jesus left, he sent the Holy Spirit as a several comforter. God desires for us to have deep and intimate fellowship with Him through the Holy Spirit. That is why it is only through the Holy Spirit that we catch a glimpse of the personality of the Father. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine and ten. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. It is through the instrumentality of the fellowship. Of the Holy Spirit that we gain understanding and insight into the Father. It is the Holy Spirit that reveals the Father. 
But some this is Bible says Christ said that but Christ with this father. That's because Christ and the Holy Spirit are one and the same. Are you there? First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and verse 10. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor hear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. So there is a preparation for the people that love God. God has a stock, a rema. And the only way to access that rema is in verse 10. But God has revealed them unto us by what? By his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Ye, the deep things of God. It is the Holy Spirit that reveals the Father to us. So, do you want to know the Father? Cultivate a fellowship or communion or relationship or friendship with the Holy Spirit. Was played an old school song yesterday, Candy Statue. How many of you have heard of Candy Statue? Ah. <laughs> this is a pastor, so an old school. Don't get rid of him. Don't get rid of him. <laughs> this is old school. You are what we, we adore you. Holy Spirit, you are love. You know the song, you know the best that is. That's what it has to We adore you. Holy Spirit, you are love. So we need to cultivate that bond, that fellowship, that interaction with the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that reveals the Father. It is the Holy Spirit that reveals the Father. You cannot know the Father if you do not know the Holy Spirit. But John chapter 14, verse 6 says that no man comes unto the Father but by me. Yes, because the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is the Spirit of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is a comforter, but much more than that, or in addition to that, the Holy Spirit is so many more things. John chapter 14, verse 26, KJV. I mean, the amplifier, I beg your pardon. John, so let's see all that the Holy Spirit is. John chapter 14, verse 26. Are you there? Amplify it. But the helper, so first, the Holy Spirit is what? The helper. The helper is also what? The comforter. It's also what? The advocate is also what the intercessor is also who the counselor also what the strengthener and who but the helper that is the comforter the advocate the intercessor the counselor the strengthener the strengthener the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name in my place to represent me and act on my behalf so if somebody is acting on your behalf that person is carrying what you call your power of atony. It will teach you all things and it will help you remember everything that I've told you. So let's break it down. The Holy Spirit is your helper. So anytime and every time your strength is weak and you get to your wit's end, just draw on the help that the Holy Spirit provides. Just, just when you get your wit's end, when you can't handle it anymore, when the and I'm talking about if everything and everything, not just spiritual things, even physical things. When your physical strength is exhausted, when you think you can't push anymore, when you think you can't take it anymore, when you're in the office and then there's so much to be done and you are under pressure, like I always am, most times in the office, that is when to do what? <coughs> Turn in to the help of the Holy Spirit. Those of you that watch Fast and Furious, I don't know how many of you watch Fast and Furious. Yeah. You will know when they are racing, when they are racing, they will go then. When it gets to a point, when they don't overtake, they do what? They go into the trouble. Yeah. And they just, you know, you can't just speed, and you see. So when you get to that point where your car is not moving as fast, just turn on the top of charge. It's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is your helper. When you get to that point where you are weak, and when you think you can't take it anymore, it's the Holy Spirit over to you. It's our helper. Is our comforter. He offers comfort during our trying and difficult moments, especially when we are dealing with grief, loss, or disappointments. I always say that it's only Christians that can deal with grief. The unbelievers cannot. Imagine 
you've been looking for a job, looking for a job, looking for it for so many months, and then they now call you for an interview, and they tell you that, ah, you are the, you are the preferred one, and they give you offer letter. Come and resume on Monday. And then on Monday, you, and of, course, of course, you come to church on Sunday, you give testimony back, you rub a bar, you do all that stuff, and you back around it. It's our church, praise God with you, and shout, and all of that. And we are rejoicing. Monday, you wear your best suit, or your best dress, or whatever you are excited, and you get to the place. Say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. You went the one who wanted to give you a The unbeliever will run mad. The unbeliever will scatter the office. The unbeliever will parade their way to the body. What happens to the believer? Just take it calmly. Why? Because there is a comforter that tells you that don't worry, this door will be closed, but another door is about to open. Yeah. It is the Holy Spirit that brings comfort to you, that tells you that you may have lost that pregnancy, but guess what? Another one is going to come. It's the Holy Spirit that tells you that don't worry, you may have been part of that house, the Lord may have just packed all your stuff out, but it's about to show up for a better one. That is what the Holy Spirit does. It brings comfort, especially when you can't explain it, especially when it's not making sense, especially when it looks as if the odds are stacked against you. That is what the Holy Spirit does. I don't know how many of you have gone through life issues and life challenges. Ah! At least if you don't know anyone, remember my I can't story. This is my dear daughter. I always use that example. Just like I can't come and then. She doesn't come and ask us the veterans. The first time. Oh, she can use it. Oh, you like. I can't do it. I can't do it. I want to come. Oh, she can't do it. Oh, you like. But even though we are pressed down and we are cast down, we don't give up. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 3. But blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort. He is the God of all comfort who comforted us in all our troubles that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort bearing we ourselves are comforted of God. So the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He offers us comfort even when we feel down and out and disappointed when that guy has disappointed you and guilted you, when somebody has stabbed you in the back, whatever you are going to, whatever you might have faced, it is the Holy Spirit that still packages you together and makes you to go ahead. Can't you whisper something as the Holy Spirit, thank you for being my comforter. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. Wow. He takes our place and speaks on our behalf. He pleads our case better than we can. He argues our case and makes sure he wins. That's what he is, advocate. The Holy Spirit is an advocate. He takes over our case. One more than a chief one will be. Because he never loses any case. He's bigger than the biggest SAN. He's wiser than the wisest SAN. Pack all the SANs of Nigeria together. The Holy Spirit has more knowledge than they do. They can't even stand. They don't even compare. So he is our advocate. And what he does, the Bible says, he did it, he did it live it to make intercession for the saints. So he's pleading your matter before God. He's telling God, giving all the reasons why you should get blessed. He's telling God every reason why you should be promoted. He's telling God every reason why you should get a job. He's making a case while the devil is out there telling you that, telling God that, God, this girl, she messed up with me she was fasting. And now I'm not supposed to be one married. When she did mess around with no, no. And that's what the devil is accused of brethren. Why the devil is canvassing all of that? The Holy Spirit is doing what? But God, you are merciful. But God, you are the God of a second child and the third and the fourth and the third. But God, you sent Jesus to die for this, your daughter. But God, you have washed our sins and washed our past. You said that if anyone be in you, he's a new creature. So she's a new creature. God, you say, that's true. Devil. I need to be able to go for you as a kid. It's an advocate. Because without him, our righteousness is like what? Fill the rags. But thank God for the Holy Spirit who is an advocate. He makes, takes our place and speaks on our behalf. Number three, he's our intercessor. Oh, I love this one. He makes intercessions for us. We grow this we cannot be altered. Romans chapter 8, verse 26, amplified. We need to fall in love with this amplified. Romans 
chapter 8 and verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness. We do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should. But the Spirit Himself knows our needs and at the right time intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for words. In the same way the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness, we do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer that prayer. But the Spirit Himself, He knows our need. And at the right time, at the nick of them, that time, just at that time, intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings which are too deep for words. The Holy Spirit is our intercessor. And when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, when you begin to pray in the Spirit, what you are doing is that you are giving the Holy Spirit liberty. How many of us have seen those, uh, um, um, what do you call them, um, self drive, uh, those uh, automatic cars that drive themselves, that you don't need to, you know, it's just like that. Once you start, just take your hands off and let the Holy Spirit do the driving. That's what it means. Because when you start to pray, at some point in time, your English, your Yoruba, your Hebrew, whatever language, it fails you. It just fails you. You just get the sense of inadequacy. You just get the sense that you are not praying as deeply or you are not, you are not hitting the target. At that point in time, you begin to pray the Holy Ghost. When you begin to pray the Holy Ghost, it begins, you, in your heart, in your spirit, you begin to get a sense that you are praying certain things that even your head cannot comprehend. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It's our intercessor. So if you are here, you are not born again, or you are here, you are not yet to be, you are yet to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we book a little bit of speaking in tongues. Please say to the ministers afterwards, because you cannot do life without the intercessor. The Holy Spirit is our intercessor. Number four is our counselor. The Holy Spirit gives the best of advice and guidance. He knows the heart of the Father, so he's able to share with us insights into our present situation and offer a way out. The Holy Spirit knows what is in, in the heart of the Father. And because he knows what's in the heart of the Father, so he would guide us. He provides that counsel to us to say, my child, my daughter, my son, do this, do that, go this way. That's why you cannot live life without the Holy Spirit. You cannot. He offers the best of counsel, much more than your friends can offer. Much more than even the so-called, uh, what do you call it, licensed or certified counselors. Yes, thank God for certified counselors. But the Holy Spirit is the chief certified counselor. Before you consult man, consult him. Hello? Hello. Before you consult man, consult him. He gives the best of advice and guidance. He knows the heart of the Father, so he's able to share with us insights to our present and situation and circumstances. Number whatever. He's our strength now. The Holy Spirit gives us strength when our strength is at our lowest. The Holy Spirit gives us strength when our strength is at our lowest. Philippians 4 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The strength is released. So when you feel weak, when you feel as if you can't take it anymore, when you feel as if you are crushed by the weight of what is going on, when you feel that you are getting news, bad news, left, right, and center, when you think as if can any can any worse news come and the worst news come again, that is the time to switch to the strength of the Holy Spirit. Paul said that three times I besought the Lord that he may take away this stone in the flesh. And every time he said that, don't worry, don't ask that I take it away. Ask that my strength be given to you. He says that, for my grace is sufficient for you. For in that weakness is my strength made manifest and made perfected. My grace is sufficient for you. So he's our strength now. He's our strength now. About six, five, or whatever. He's our standby. The Holy Spirit is available 247. He only waits for our whisper to call on him. He takes over when we have reached our exhaustion point. He's ever present to bail us out of every situation. He's our standby. And I love this one because it's available. His network never jumps. He's never sleeping, never slumbering. He's there. Anytime, at any moment, when you get to a situation where you cannot handle, when things are confused, confusing. When you can't figure out what to do, when you're in, this, you're in the tight corner and you're confused, just Holy Spirit, take over. Holy Spirit, take over. Just whisper. You don't even need to pray. You know, just whisper. Holy Spirit, take over. 
I was in, a, in such a similar situation a couple of days ago. I, I needed to pick a document somewhere, and once you enter, you can't, you can't really go out. You have to, you know, join the queue again. So I did not say, oh, there's a particular document uh, I needed to bring along. I said, well, I don't know. You didn't tell me. I didn't see it in whatever. I said, I'm sorry. But you have it on your phone. I said, yes, I have that document on my phone, in my, in my email. I said, okay, so you pointed me to another office where they do business. I said, okay, go there. You send it to them by email, and then um, they will print it out. So I got to the place. I sent it to the guy by email. They printed it out. I said, oh, hold up. And I did like this. Show and behold, my wallet was on me. Typically, I don't carry my wallet. My wallet is in my bag. In fact, the guy was pointing. I said, can I do it? I now pointed to it. I just that sign. Only PS, they don't collect cash, they don't transfer, only PS. If you go out of that place, you have to make another appointment again. I said, I don't, I don't have my wallet. So the guy collected the document and put it aside. I said, okay, see, I work in the bank. Um, I think that should speak for some time, the man of integrity, right? But um, he should be there. I said, can I talk to your supervisor? He said, no, don't go there. So I just said, oh, I, need to, I just need to get out of this. I don't know how I'm going to get out of here, but I need to get out of here. Because it's what I prefer. I actually need people. I need people. Let's see, let them make exception for me. So I was there. I was just looking. So when this professor came and saw, he, he, obviously that there was something was going on, he now asked the guy, what is it? The guy said, nothing, sir. So the, the man now said, Dita, he sounded like this to me. So I got to me and I walked out. So I didn't have to pay, I didn't have to come back, and I was delivered from that. I was in like a stranger situation because I mean, you know what it is to get out of, take time out of the office. Uh, the variety. I could imagine having to book another appointment. Once you are stranded, just draw the respect. It's your standby. Once you feel stranded, once you think you, I, I've got my wits end, I don't know what to do again. I can't listen, I can't figure out. It's your standby. It's your standby. I need to be grateful for the Holy Spirit. Can you just give part to the Holy Spirit? I love you. Okay, you are not able to do that because you are, your relationship is still a bit poor. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. Thank you for being my standby. Thank you for being my standby. And then the Holy Spirit is what? He's your teacher. The Holy Spirit teaches us all things. First John chapter 2, verse 27. Right there in the example, and I've, I, I don't know about you, but me, I've expressed that. Not once, not twice, not three times. When I'm writing an exam, and then I, I can't really figure out, um, you know, this question. I, I'm not really sure whether I understand this question or not. I don't even know how to answer it. And just be Holy Spirit. Help me out of here. Holy Spirit, teach me. The Holy Spirit just inspire you to begin to write in a particular way. I have experienced that not once, not twice, not three times. Not four times, not five times, not six times, not seven times, not eight times. That's why I said to you that where it comes from academic excellence, I have enjoyed grace. Grace or academic excellence, I've enjoyed it. Sometimes I'll be writing like this, and I think I'm writing rubbish. You know, I think that this thing I'm writing there does not really make sense. Even me, but I'm not this paper, I'm not. And then results are out. And I'll have one of the very best grades. I'm like, what exactly did I write? Two things could have happened. Either after I've received my own jargon, which means he released it, I wrote his own. <laughs> <laughs> or he left the jargon there when the man was marking, he was seeing the good thing. You know, the two things. I just know that a miracle just happened. Can you just trust him as your teacher? First John 2 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abided in you. You need not that any man teach you, but at the as the same and as the same anointing teaches you all things, and it's truth and it's not a lie, even as he has taught you, you shall abide in him. The same place we read in John chapter 14, verse 26. Now, KJV, just um, but the comfort which is always which is only goes whom the father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and not only will he teach you, he will bring to your remembrance. The Holy Spirit, I call it the spirit of the call. I call it the spirit of the call. Every time I'm going into the examination hall, I'll say that as long as I was in class, when that lecture I taught, as long as I read my, my syllabus, body to body, as long as I ever came across it, whether I took note of it or not, whether I read it consciously or not, for as long as I've read it, it has gone into my memory. Holy Spirit, I call it. 
Holy Spirit, they call it. And you just remember praying. You might not remember very, very well. Just remember praying there. These things are simple, simple, simple. Just put that thing as simple, simple, simple. That's the Holy Spirit for you. It teaches you and brings to your remembrance. Hallelujah. Amen. It's your teacher. Let's move a bit faster. It's also a companion. John chapter 14, verse 26, the contemporary English, English uh, uh, the Bible, CEB, is a companion. It says, CEB, says that the companion, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I told you. He's a companion. The Holy Spirit wants to be your best buddy. He wants to be more real to you than your physical partner. Hello? Hi. The Holy Spirit wants to be more real to you than your physical partner. That is the ultimate. That is the communion we're talking about here. And I hope we'll have time to pray that this morning. The Holy Spirit wants to be so real to you that you would literally be able to touch him like as if I'm touching a physical person because he's your companion. Like I said, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. In Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 11. And he glorifies Jesus. John 16, 14. Will we read that John 16, 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall be seed of mine, and shall show it unto you. He will glorify me because he is the Spirit of Jesus. He is the Spirit of Christ. He is the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is given to the believer to do life. You cannot do life without the Holy Spirit. We are meant to be full of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit takes you over, takes you over fully, then your entire being aligns with God's will and purpose. The ultimate for the believer is that the Holy Spirit takes us fully, so that everything about us, spirit, soul, and body, aligns with God. It just we fall in, we fall into purpose, we fall in alignment. Every step you take, it is Holy Spirit led. Anything you do is Holy Spirit led. When you are walking, sleeping. That's anything it is Holy Spirit led. That is the ultimate for the believer. The Holy Spirit wants to fill us continually. Acts chapter 6 and verse 3. Acts chapter 3. I think about Acts chapter 6 and verse 3. Acts 6 and verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost, so you can be full of the Holy Ghost. It is a possibility. And if I were you, I would desire that, as I desired. These men were full of the Holy Ghost. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18, Paul admonishes us to be like those men that we saw in Acts. What did he say? Acts 5 18. And be not be drunk with wine when it is excess, but be filled. With the spirit, be filled. You can't be filled with the spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. Be filled with spirit. Galatians chapter five and verse eighteen. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. You are when you are filled with the spirit, you are led of the spirit. Praise the Lord. If ye be led of the spirit, let's look at one person. Azariah. Azariah. 7 Chronicles 15. I'll just close with that because of time. And I'll just, I'll just pray. 7 Chronicles 15. This is an Old Testament guy. 7 Chronicles 15. That's that from verse 1. And the Spirit of God came upon Isaiah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asha and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asha, and all Judah, and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Now, for a long season, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. But when they, when they in their trouble did turn unto him, unto the Lord God of Israel, and sought him, he was found of them. And in those days, and in those times, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But great vexation were upon all the inhabitants of the country, and nations were destroyed. Blah, 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 to get to where Asa, Basi, and when Asa had those words, and the prophecy of Odea, the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin, out of the cities which he had taken from the Mount Ephraim, and renewed the house of the Lord, and was before the pouch of the Lord. When the Spirit of God came upon this gentleman and prophesied to the king, one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is that you are fearless. 
when you have the you it prophesied to the kingdom may we begin to have people who will be filled with the holy spirit yeah. and we can stand to declare the total counsel of god in our nation yeah. Yeah. would you be one of them i will be one of them i will receive the infilling of the holy spirit so that i can reveal the mind of god at time rise upon your face a few things what the holy spirit does I didn't go into that, but I just wanted to hit the point about the Holy Spirit being a companion, a being a comforter, being an advocate, wanting you, wanting to take you over. Pray one prayer and I'll step down. Holy Spirit, take me over. Hundred percent. I yield my soul, spiritual and body, totally to you. Pray in your minutes. Pray in your minutes. Pray in your minutes. Take me over. Take me over. Take my life comfortable. Teach all. Teach me all I need to know. My God. My God.
a word of thanksgiving, a word of appreciation, a word of you know gratitude unto God who has been faithful unto us. And if you have your titles, speak to it and tell God according to his word that bring your young title to my house and prove me now here with that God will prove himself you know why you're alive and over that time in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, accept us, accept our offering. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah. So why I take the off, uh, announcement, the ushers will take the offering. Hallelujah. So let's listen to the following announcement. Please, is there anyone worshiping with us for the very first time? Is there anyone? Alright, welcome Sister Jane. She came last week. You know, to worship with us. But it's very deep, you know, where she walks. And we can't just give her all the opportunity. So, you know, for her to be here again, I believe it's the Holy Spirit that is at work. We appreciate you for joining us once again this morning. You are very much welcome. All right. So, 5 p.m. this evening, you know, enough is enough continues. So, if you are not there on Friday, don't miss this for anything. You can hear the testimony. You know, we cannot quantify you know, what happens in the presence of God. So, let's avail ourselves this opportunity to be there this evening by 5 p.m. at the headquarters church. The Lord will do us good in the mighty name of Jesus. So, I expect each and every one of us to be there. We are the, the witness that we will all be there this evening. Sister Augusta. No, that's why you have not responded. <laughs> All right, it is well. Okay, Wednesday, the first of November, is the first of November, and we'll be having our early morning settlement prayer on free conference call. So please, you are supposed to come here live, you know, to pray, or you know, to make it more convenient for us. You know, you know, we have the opportunity to join online. So please. Especially if you are a worker, please, if you don't have this app on your phone, please create space, you know, to have it and make sure you join. And also, you know, it's good for us to commit the month into the hands of God as we enter into the month of October. It's good for us to start with God. So please, let's start with God on 1st of November by 6 a.m. on the free conference call app. So the details is on the screen and if you need anybody to help you to install it on your phone you can see any of the minister or any of the media unit members to help you to do it on the same wednesday in the evening we'll be converging here again you know for keeping the same and uh, communion service by 6 p.m and you know we will be starting on a new series which is the life and times of Paul. I will be going through the early days of uh, Paul. So please, if you don't have your quiet time, it's an opportunity. Now, Pastor has given us this idea. I think he said he will ask us questions. You know, so please, we'll be reading the book of Acts, Acts chapter 7 to 9, Galatians 1, Philippians 3. So use it, you can use it as your devotional, you know, to read ahead of that Bible study time. And I pray that this study will not be in vain. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. the word of God will grow so mightily in our lives. In the name of Jesus, that will be above all circumstances and be above all. In the day, above all odds. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, the Sunday, the fifth of November, which will be the first Sunday in the month of November, we will be having fresh impartation here by 8:30 p.m. All we can know that knows that this is very compulsory for us. So before that, by 7.30 a.m., we'll be having prayer revolution in. And after prayer revolution, by 8.30, we'll be having fresh impartation. So it's very compulsory for all workers. And afterwards, after the service on that same day, we'll be having workers meeting after the service. Workers meeting this time around, not board meetings. So all workers will be having meeting after the service. All right, today is the last Sunday of the month. All celebrants of the month and I'm sure. Wait after the service. Oh, and okay, snap. I also want to appreciate God on behalf of everyone supporting this course. I 
pray that the Lord will bless you mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, let's rise up on our feet. We are going to be reading Psalm 91. We will be confessing this word. I will believe that I will speak in life as we go this week. Can we have Psalm 91 projected? Let's read it together. Are you are in the place. Let's personalize it. I am biding on the shadow of the Lord. I will say of the Lord, Lord. Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God will give me all that I know. Surely you shall be the Lord. And from all the circumstances, you shall honor me with the Lord. And all that is rich by the truth. And so you shall be my shield of all that. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fire by day. Nor for the person that walk into darkness, nor for the destruction of those that are doing it. A thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not fall near me. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the Lord. So I shall be the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high in my habitation. There shall no evil before me, neither shall any day come near my dwelling. For it shall be the strangers charge you me, to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me up in their hands, yes, I dash my feet the soul. I shall tread upon the lion and the lion, the young lion and the dragon shall trample me up their feet. Because I said, it's not for me, and I will not be a man of me. I said to me, or I, what comes to me? I shall call upon him for the last time. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me. He will honor me. I will go out there and be satisfied me and show me his salvation. So shall be concerning us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Grace, Master Jesus. Have you been blessed today? Yes. I want to challenge us, please. When you get home, or even on the road, anywhere, just whisper to him. He's he real. He's a person. We didn't bother to do a study about this word. He's a person. He's the top person of the Trinity. So it's, it's more real than the person you are sitting beside you. And as you cultivate that, you know, that fellowship, he will reveal himself more to you. We celebrate and thank God for those who joined us online. Uh, from the Esther Gamba, the Lord bless you in Prince Mark. Sister in Manchester, Reverend Lang Amando, God bless you, ma. We have the William, Brother Lando, and Sister Nogi. We serve all of our friends. So I think God did that. He's gone back to Lagos. Sister Elizabeth, thank you. Brother Chris, from here. And who else did I say? It's online. Okay, Chris, I'm going to try this. And anybody else that was online that did not see, or that did not, that did not uh, imitate their uh, person. The Lord bless you all. I believe that the blessing that we have received here, you have also part, uh, made particular zero. Father will bless you. Father will thank you. Father will worship you. Father will honor you. We thank you for such a wonderful time in your presence. We thank you especially for the last Sunday in this month, the 10th month. When we gather again, we gather Wednesday, which will be the first day of the new month. And so we are persuaded of bigger, better, greater things concerning us. And so as we go, even in the last few days before October is over, last minute of come miracle, let it be our portion. Amen. Lord, every package, this month of mega grace, the mega blessings that are yet to we are yet to lay on. Lord, this month will not end until they come to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. All our steps are right and guide us. Lord, lead us. Lead us to our worldly place. Lead us to a large place. Lead us to a place of blessing. Holy Spirit, we are not about to. You desire to have communion with us. Holy Spirit, lead us, guide us, what our steps are right. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Let us hear a word behind us saying, This is going to go to our go there in the name of Jesus. Lord, as you lead us, we will not stumble. As you lead us, we will not fall. As you lead us, we will not get to struggle in the name of Jesus. It is a glorious, wonderful, exciting week for us. It is a week of Double package Amen. is a week of greatness Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. For as many as have one interview or the other, or have one thing 
one deadline to meet, one thing that they have to do this week will go. Lord, make it possible for them. Amen. Holy Spirit, quick in our mental faculties and remind us of things that we have known so that we can succeed, so that we can excel. Favor the Lord, grace and mercy the Lord. We cover ourselves in the Lord Jesus, we cover all our family members, all our loved ones, all our members out of town. Lord, you bring them back safely in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all things to go. Bless them your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shall we say anything this together? The Lord of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be in the Bible with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and shall join the dust of the Lord forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 16 and verse 11. For the Lord is sure the path of life and his presence is fullness of joy and his right hand and the pleasures forevermore. Amen. So the Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. Have a great and a wonderful week. See you on the prayer line at 6 a.m. on Wednesday for the early consent prayer. And see you here physically on Wednesday evening for life and times of Apostle Paul. God bless you.